Howdy everybody in YouTube land. I've decided to record this video on my iPhone. Yes, I got an iDevice. Actually, I got a few of them. Well, two of them. One's here, and I'm holding the other one. And this is what I normally record all my videos with. Is this guy right here. So, why am I doing this? Well, it's been a while since I've updated you guys on what's been going on lately, but... I figured I'd do a quick rundown. Oh, I got my MacBook Pro 13.3 inch here. Bought this specifically for development reasons. As you may be aware, I write software for Android devices using, you know, major display scoreboards and all of that fun stuff. But it's time we started supporting iOS. So. I got a rather complicated setup here. Because of the screen size and the resolution's a little bit too small on that thing, what I do is I have my compiler software here that I write all of my uh, software in. Then that actually makes a direct connection to this laptop. This laptop runs Xcode, which actually uses my private signature keys and the development keys and all that fun stuff builds the application and then sends it back over to here which then takes it and then pushes it pushes the IPA file side loads it onto that device and it works rather well now the nice thing is is that means I don't even need the Mac at all to do the development but I have it anyway so I can you know I can take that home and connect it up and just use it at that but the problem is Actually, I didn't even show you when I had the lid open. That's the script that does the work. Now, this this actual application does not have a password-based system, so I can't put this online without somebody risk using it as a build server. But uh, the point of it is um, I can just use it locally. But I can do it online if I wanted to. It just wouldn't have any kind of security. <laughs> so... Um, another reason why I decided to use the iPod is to bring out a little complaint that I'm sure more than just I have. Every time I watch a video, it seems like people with iDevices always wants to record it like that. It is highly annoying. When you're using a camera, please record it in this orientation. Thank you. Thank you for cooperating. Now that my little rant is over on that... Um, let's see what else have I been to, been, been up to. I've been doing a lot of engineering work lately. I made this board. This is my new matrix card board. And, uh, this is the tile, which is actually a 16 by 16 dot matrix display. And because of the pitch being .065 on center, I don't have the room to do the, um, you know, the, the, Oh hell, the the spacing between the LEDs doesn't give me room for parts. So what I ended up doing was uh, actually putting the driver card external. And of course, as you can probably tell, the silk screen did not print on my chips. Actually, those aren't chips, those are SOIC8 transistors. So uh, yeah, besides that little problem... And that's my fault. That's not that's my fault for not de including a specific layer in the silk screen cam generator. So what I did was I made this a V cut groove so I can snap it off and it solders underneath. Because I'm gonna put sockets here and then this guy just goes like that and everything lines up so I can mount here and here and clamp it all together. Molex plug for 12 volt power and then digital cables run from here to here, which is buffered off of the ATX Mega. So, plain and simple. Now, a little bit unrelated. Got me another Macintosh portable. Uh, specifically bought this one for um, modifying. Uh, I went ahead and recapped it, but it turns out that this thing had some serious damage. First off, this chip was completely turned, it turned brown. You see what color it is now because I replaced it, but it was brown. And, of course, it was bad because when I plugged the power into it, it was pulling an extreme amount of current from the power supply. Why, I don't know, but it was. So, this was fried, pulled it out, still pulling a lot of current. 
Well, this was getting hot. This was getting hot. All or, Well, I didn't know about this one, but these two were getting hot. So was this. So I pulled all those chips one at a time, and they were all bad. And there's the big pile of crap, a pile of them right here. So then what I ended up doing was uh, uh, replacing them. And then it still wasn't right. It still gave me two black bars and a screen, and it just was not right. And I'm like, well, why in the hell is that? So, worse comes to worse. You know, I thought I was going to have to scrap the board, but then I noticed this chip was getting warm, so I went ahead and replaced that one, and now it works fine. So, some kind of cascade failure blew that up. That, 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 and that, and fun. So, that's all done. Uh, let's see, what else? Anything interesting at all here to to work on? You know, oh yeah, Heath Kit, 1960s Heath Kit. I got to do a full recap and rebuild of that sucker. And then I had to special order these driver transistors because they come pre-mounted on these heat sinks because that set down there is blown up. So I got to do that. Uh, my new digit design. Let's see. What else? Um, how about... Let's see. Yeah, here we go. I forgot to do a video on this. This is the remains of a Macintosh portable. And actually the one that that motherboard goes to. But this is the primary display. And if you notice, it's a slightly different shade of what they normally are. Okay, well, that's because I, this is a non-backlit display, and what I ended up doing was I took the display out, and I peeled off the transflective film material, so I can put an EL sheet back here. And actually, this is the remnants of the EL sheet that I cut, and I did this like this on purpose, so I still have a little bit of the electrode, I could reuse this. Same thing with that little piece there. So... That guy fits under here, but as you can probably tell, the electrodes that run around the side are too big to fit within the border of here. So, on the one piece I had to cut, I had to fold it back. And that was fun. Believe you me, that was fun. Well, fun in a sarcastic sense. So, uh, but the reason why I, I removed the L-sheet in this display is because this one has tunnel vision. After it's on for a while, it develops this big black line here on both sides and you see these cataracts showing up in the screen and then if you leave it on for a while and after you turn it off you can actually see a faint remnant of the image there for at least 10 minutes while it's off so that panel is bad now I don't know if it's from the heat gun and me peeling it off or it was bad from the start because I did not test this display before I started which I should have done but I didn't so my test display which I have right here my test display I had to take apart and I did the same procedure but instead of pulling up on the film I pulled flat on the surface this way okay and it, it slowly went after it heated up a little bit slowly went after it and the good thing about that is this one still works that, and that display actually works great so let's see but then there comes the problem there's the inner cage. So now you have an idea of what it looks like inside the portable. Well, there's the inverter. Okay, well, <laughs> look at the size of that, that hoss. I mean, come on now. I mean, seriously, where am I going to put that? So, <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. But, for now, let's just go ahead and lock in the connector here show you what this looks like actually because it's kind of cool so power one plug okay green light we're good let's plug this guy in here so isn't that just cool so there we have it folks we have a backlit converted macintosh non-backlit portable so now that's got that nice little indiglow blue because that's what I was after. It's a slightly different shade. It's not as aqua, but $60 sheet of EL material. It's an A4 size I had to cut down because originally it was like, you know, that. So.
so as you can probably tell that was that was some fun crap to cut oh yeah there's the fold on the electrode I had to do this is folded up underneath like that underneath the display and it's on this bottom edge which is why I did that so you don't see it as easily you can actually kind of see the fold down in there but you can kind of see the black spot at least it's outside of the visible pixel area of where I had to make the solder connection on the new electrode because the original EL sheets the electrodes came out all the way to here and it was um heat shrink that wasn't gonna work there's no way not gonna happen so best thing to do is rub through some of the laminate here and make solder connections directly behind it and actually I did that over here so I could fold this sheet over it and it covers the electrode solder connection so it doesn't short anything out and it worked a treat and, and that's down in here so uh, and then there's a little two piece of this blue 30 gauge wire because the original thick wire was too thick to get underneath the panel because the spacing is really really small and actually I'll demonstrate that here you look how small that spacing is and I had to remove maneuver around the zebra stripe so uh, actually I actually had to cut a little bit off over here you can kind of see it Let's see if I can get this camera to focus there we go yeah I, it, that is that's just too thin there's no way so yeah but it works great but the only thing is is this 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 display assembly just wants to pop apart all the time I mean why eh, I'll deal with that later it's just a little oh well friggin so oh yeah and this one came to me with a little bit of shipping damage. I had to had to glue some pieces back on because that was not a fun endeavor. Not at all. A little bit of scuff, but you know, whatever. You're gonna have that. Uh I think that's about it. Oh yeah, I got this guy listed on eBay right now. This is a Accelera PCI, which I don't know what I'm ever gonna do with. So it's on eBay, gonna go bye-bye. It's already got a bid on it currently. Um I think that's it. Aside from the standard repairs we got normally got going on, um, one being the whole bunch of uh, classic classic two boards in there. But I got an amplifier here that I have to do, um, you know, crap like you know, uh, replace the RCA jacks because there's one broke clean off right there. This one was a rock for Fosgate two channel. There's a mount output MOSFET dead here. I had to replace that along with its emitter or well source resistor. Uh, let's see. Um, what else is there? Um, oh yeah, there's an appliance board and actually this one here. These suffer dim displays and you can't buy the displays anymore. So in case you were wondering about my contraption, I was actually converting the negative going signaling for the anodes and grids into a digital plus 5 volt signal. Because what I was going to do is make a little board that goes in between here, plugs into where these anode connections are, and then up and over to a dot matrix display. So then I can actually retrofit this and make it work. Because you just can't, and those controls are discontinued, so you just can't replace it anyway. Um... I think that's about it. I don't really have a whole lot else status updates wise going on that you would even care about. You know, I mean, well, I got a image writer too that I had to fully recap and restore. This is the first generation where it shows the Apple logo and doesn't have the image writer next to it. Um, and yeah, that poor keyboard has seen better days. And I believe that's it. I don't have anything else. So uh, yeah, it's just been it's just been a day of time. I've been too busy. I haven't had time to make any YouTube videos or anything. I just I just have I just haven't had time. I got a new neighbor downstairs living below me that is just very annoying, noisy, noisy neighbors. And I'm sure you people that live in condos and apartment complexes know that uh, if the building's old and there's not in, there's no insulation between the floors and the walls, you're going to hear everything they're doing. 
you know, I can I know when they're taking a shit. I know when they're cooking food. I know when they're having a meeting. I know when the four-year-old kid that lives below me now has his friends over jumping off the furniture on the bed. Oh, yeah, it's fun. So, needless to say, when my lease is up in June, I'm going bye-bye. I'm getting the hell out of there. Now, where I'm going yet is yet to be determined. I may be moving to North Carolina. I may not. I don't know yet. So, hmm. Without further ado, thank you for watching, and please feel free to leave a comment.